The Atlanta Falcons continue on their off-season training program this coming week, entering a new phase of their preparation, with the rookie minicamp, voluntary off-season workouts and organized team activities all in the rearview mirror, and now with their three-day mandatory minicamp portion ahead of them. Of course, the main story Lynn that Falcons fans will be keeping an eye on is the presence of wide receiver Julio Jones, who stayed away from the voluntary workouts and team activities in what reports contend is a minor dispute regarding his current contract, even if the player himself has denied those reasons. Head coach Dan Quinn, quarterback Matt Ryan, and others have all stated that Jones will be present for minicamp. The off-season program takes place in three general phases. First, the team assembled for two weeks with activities limited to strength and conditioning and physical rehabilitation work. Second, over roughly three weeks' time, players took part in on-field workouts consisting of instruction and physical drills in addition to a form of team practice with players divided into positional groups, but with no live contact or scrimmages. Lastly, the team will have several days of organized practice, but without contact and in 7s, 9s, and 11s drills. June 12 to 14 finds the Falcons back in Flowery Branch and ready to host the event, with one of the days, the 13th, being open to the public for fans to watch the team in person. Here is what they, and you, should be watching for during this important period. The star wide receiver has not been spotted in Flowery Branch for the offseason, with the reason most often given being that he wants an update to his existing contract. Jones himself appeared to deny those claims in his sole public remarks this offseason, but for whatever reason, he was not with the team. Dan Quinn has been adamant whenever asked that Jones will be at the mandatory portion of the workouts, but the proof will be in the pudding on Tuesday. Offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian took the brunt of the criticism last season after the Falcons' offense took a notable step backwards from their 2016 glories, with play calls in important situations being questioned by media and fans alike. Clearly, the unit needs some changes, especially in this window the team has right now to make a run for a title. What will the offense look like? What kind of wrinkles will Sark throw into the works and make this thing go again? The Falcons' first-round draft pick this year, a former standout wide receiver from Alabama, has been getting major reps during the workouts and organized team activities already this offseason, indicating the kind of impact they feel he must and will have for the their offense in 2018. A talented route runner and hands receiver, Ridley has been tried out in the slot, on the outside, and as a return man on special teams. Atlanta got almost a thousand more yards from 2016 to 2017 when they had three wideouts on the field, and Ridley is expected to occupy that third spot behind Jones and Mohamed Sanu. The Atlanta Falcons have what godfather of scouting great Gail Brandt called one of the best ten rosters in the NFL entering this season, boasting star playmakers on both sides of the ball, and on special teams. Defensively, the Falcons enjoy a combination of youth and experience, with veterans like Terrell McLean and Brooks Reed up front, younger stars like Vic Beasley and Keanu Neal, and up-and-comers like Deion Jones and Takarist McKinley, among others, all waiting to cement their legacy. A large part of the Falcons' mission is to maintain and build upon that harmony they have built on this side of the ball. Talented, the Falcons are. But last season, the team did succumb to a few relatively costly injuries, including to defensive end, linebacker Vic Beasley, linebacker Duke Riley, right tackle Ryan Schroeder, left guard Andy Levitri, and running back Devonta Freeman, in particular. Freeman is the name to watch here, the back has stated that his knee injury, acquired in the regular season finale back in December, has been coming along, but the team must ensure that his recovery is on schedule, and also that they do not bring him back too soon and subject him to potential further injury. Greg Knapp was named the Atlanta Falcons quarterback's coach to begin the first week of the offseason, giving Matt Ryan his third voice in this position in as many seasons, Knapp has been an NFL assistant for many years. Notably at San Francisco, Oakland, Seattle, Houston, Denver, and from 2004 to 06 served as the Falcons' offensive coordinator when Michael Vick was at quarterback. Recently, Knapp was Peyton Manning's quarterback coach in his Super Bowl season in 2015-16.
what effect will he have on Ryan, and on this offense? This should be a critical issue for the Falcons defensive coaches to focus on this offseason. Atlanta ranked below average in the turnover differential last year, finishing with a minus two mark, suffering 18 turnovers of their own while coming away with 16 from opponents. Those 16 were the fourth fewest in the NFL, and their eight intercepted passes as a defense were the third least. A defense this athletic, and as talented as they are at getting their hands on the ball to bat passes away, needs more takeaways. Free safety Ricardo Allen was present for the team's practices at Flowery Branch even though he is yet to sign the second-round tender offer he was given by the organization earlier this offseason, getting Allen's signature on a tender is not the Falcons' ultimate hope. They still want to lock down one of their most important defensive players for the long term, but have not yet determined what kind of investment they will make in Allen's forthcoming contract.